Hello, my name is Swiss Bianco. In this video we will have a look at the Rough Rider Highland Spike knife. Uh, Rough Rider is mainly known for the, their version of the typical US style folding pocket knives. I did make some videos about them, different variation. They make quite likely about a thousand different uh, styles and variations of that theme and from time to time they also offer something a bit different fixed blades uh, uh, more, more modern folding knives and so on and this is an example of it that's actually the the first example that I ever did buy uh, of that line so we want to quick have a look what we could expect and what we get uh, price wise we have to see that is a rather low price item so we can't expect that much it's uh, made in China in the best quality Chineseium that they could uh, get the hands on so what we have as a packaging is basically a nice box we see there the website too so more information on that side as we open up the cardboard box we had the item in a plastic wrapper and the, the gale packaging there so nothing nothing special then we have of course the, the sheet and the knife we start with the knife so we have a 440A uh, steel blade full tang material it's rather thick about four or five millimeter thick there uh, we have uh, as it says said uh, a spike design a rather long uh, like a nail like a design uh, by the blade we have a slight hollow ground on both sides that a uh, makes it a bit better cutting but we have to see by the thickness by the steep angle by the short distance even with a hollow grind that the uh, knife blade of course not gonna cut absolute well uh, it also came not 100% sharpened out of the box uh, that is typical that is to be expected and uh, I did resharpen it quick uh, and there you notice the quality of the material uh, it was was rather easy to resharpen uh, a lot of material is quick removed if needed but uh, yeah that is how that is we have a bit a uh, bayonet uh, style blade uh, on the top we have a false edge it's not sharpened so it's not like a dagger in case that would be banded in your area it has a good millimeter on top where it doesn't cut of course you can sharpen that up if you want especially by that easy to remove material we have that typical grayish finish they say it's a titanium coating uh, it's not a titanium nitrite it's more like a paint or a little bit better than a paint but it's not a, a hard uh, like a diamond hard uh, coating that is how that is we see there a bit uh, engraving and also the logo on the other side then as we come to the handle part we have a full tang uh, piece with a lanyard hole they did not chamfer it so if you want to use the lanyard hole it needs to be chamfered a bit because the G10 scales gonna be really biting into a cordage uh, we have a flat part here at the end some serrations all around here for the grip and uh, we have G10 uh, handles screwed on with two screws for each side uh, they quite likely did not use a Loctite so if you're actually going to carry the item I would suggest gluing on the scales on the full tang and uh, use Loctite on the screws we have a textured on top G10, the usual peel off uh, style on the black and below we have red. Now as I did order that knife, 
Uh, it did show a picture of an all black version, but the, this red version did arrive. So it could be that they make different version of that knife. So you need to look a bit what you want or what you get. It could arrive in a different uh, in a different color. I sure would have preferred it all black, but that is how that is. We have. Uh, the serrations that are not 100% aligned between the G10 and the metal in all four sides. That's a typical, a typical uh, manufacturing process that is not 100% done. Then as you hold the knife, basically you have the serrations here and on the bottom. You still need to be absolutely careful that you don't slip because you could slip straight into the into the blade into the edge there because there is no guard it's just those those uh, serrations there to hold on so it would be really easy to slip forward and, and cut the finger so you need to be careful if you use the knife uh, the texturing on top is medium the most uh, that it's it's a blocky design we see that it's blocky from this side it's blocky from that side with a little bit of uh, the edge removed there it's not rounded off it just has a blocky blocky design the back side because it's flat is uh, relatively easy if you want to hold it uh, like this or like that you know so that you don't hopefully not gonna gonna slip uh, forward and cut your fingers so that much about the, the knife. There is quite some room for customization if you want to put a different uh, grip on it. You know, if you just want to want to use the blade and uh, put another grip on it. If you want to wrap the grip with something to have more more grip, there there is x possibilities. Now to the sheet. The sheet is uh, as usual, unfortunately often a weak point and I would say with this one that is uh, the same uh, what it should have is a minimal size minimal style multi carry kydex but they give you this so we have the usual Cordura with a bit of plastic sheet the insert there with rivets shiny shiny non-tactical rivets that hold it together we have here a belt loopish thing, we have here another loop and at the end we have this flappy thing here that you could mount it somewhere else too. As we put the knife in it, it of course goes both ways, whatever you want. Uh, it is like this, fully in the sheet, so you have enough to pull it out there and uh, yeah if you want to carry it with that sheet that is absolute well and and uh, fine it's just maybe not that well for tactical application maybe you want to want to uh, paint or uh, make the, the rivets a bit a bit uh, darker and uh, maybe you're gonna put it in maybe it even fits into a, a slot of the the molly so that you could wear it like on a chest rig as a get off me knife but even there i would suggest uh, make a, a custom kydex something that works a bit better than that cordura uh, cordura is good and right but if it gets wet you know the retention it like this it would not fall out that easy but because it's covered most of the the handle and all that uh, i just don't like it too much that is not tactical but maybe the people uh, that use that knife don't want to use it tactical they just want to have a a spiky knife with a cordura sheet that is how that is so yeah, that much about that. Uh, for me personally, I'm gonna one day rework a bit on that knife. I'm gonna make a bit of Kydex sheet. I don't know yet uh, how I'm gonna set it up uh, for 
what piece of kit I'm gonna gonna set it up. I just wanted to test out that spike-like appearance and uh, use it a bit and test it out. See if I like it. If I don't, you know, worst case I can always uh, put it for sale and get rid of it if I don't like it. But at least for now, it's resharpened. It's actually as sharp as it can be. So that much about the Rough Rider Highland Spike.